In order to use a flower key to identify an unknown flower, you first need to be able to identify the anatomical parts of the flower. The most obvious and well-known feature of the flower are its petals, and these are commonly the most beautiful and colourful part of the flower. This is not accidental, of course, as their colour and markings have evolved to attract bees and insects towards them in the hopes of feeding on the nectar. And in their doing so, they pick up and transfer pollen to the next flower they visit. Passing pollen from one flower to another is how plants cross-pollinate. In other words, how they reproduce with other flowers. Together, the petals of a flower are referred to as the corolla. Underneath the petals, you have the sepals. These are frequently green and inconspicuous. Their function is to protect the reproductive organs of the flower. They are a defensive organ that encapsulates and protects the flower while it's in bud. Together, the sepals of the flower are referred to as the calyx. In some cases where the sepals and the petals look alike or cannot be easily distinguished from each other, they are referred to as tepals. This is often the case for orchids. Underneath the calyx, you have the receptacle, which is the end of the flower stalk to which the flower parts are attached. And the stalk to a specific flower is referred to as the pedicel. It is worth noting that the words stalk and stem can be used interchangeably. Inside the corolla or the petals of the flower, you have the male and female reproductive parts of the plant. The female reproductive organs consist of the stigma, the style, the ovary and the ovules. The stigma the outermost reciprocal of the female reproductive parts is where the pollen is received during pollination. From the stigma, the pollen then travels down the style, which is a tube that connects the stigma to the ovary. And the ovary is the female reproductive organ that contains the ovules, which can develop into seeds when they become fertilized. And then over time, as the ovary ripens, it will mature into a fruit. The male reproductive organs consist of the anther and the filament. Together, they are referred to as the stamen. The anther is the part of the stamen where the pollen is produced and this normally sits on top of the filaments so that when the bees and insects are attracted towards the beautiful petals of the flower, pollen particles are picked up on the surface of the visiting insect. The colour, form, shape or absence of any of these parts of a flower can be characteristic features used for their identification, not only of the flower, but what family it's a member of. But the flower head isn't the only information rich part of the plant. The leaves and carefully looking at their arrangement around the flower stem can be very informative in trying to identify a flower. There are multiple features that are worth looking out for. A couple of examples are, are the leaves simple or complex? Is there a single simple leaf that comes off the flower stalk? Or are they complex, meaning that the leaves are subdivided into leaflets? Leaflets can be described as pinnate, bipinnate, palmate or trifoliate. It's also worth looking at how these leaves are orientated in relation to each other up the stem. Are they opposite up the stem? Are they leaf pairs at right angles to each other? Are they alternate or whirling up the stem? Does the leaf have a petiole, which is a stem between that of the main flower pedicel and the leaf? How does the leaf insert into the main flower stem? Does it have its own leaf stem, the petiole, or is it sessile? In other words, does it have no leaf stem? Does the leaf clasp around the main flower stem, or is it prefoliate, where the stem appears to pass through the middle of the leaf? 
It is also worth looking into the different shapes of the leaves and the indentation on the edges. Are they, for example, serrate, dentate, crenate, wavy or spiny? And finally, how are the flowers arranged on the plant? This is referred to as the inflorescence. Is there a single flower to the stem? Is it in a spike or a race me or one of the many other examples you can see on this illustration that is worth taking the time to look at because all of this information helps you distinguish between one family of flowers and the other. So in order to get you started, I'm going to bring you out with me into the field and show you how I use my notebook to write down and identify all the features of a flower that I stumble upon in order to be able to identify it. Now, all of this information can seem a little bit daunting, but it doesn't need to be. You don't have to remember it all. So what I would recommend for all of you budding botanists out there is to get a hold of a wildflower key or one of the many brilliant educational aids that have been published by the Field Studies Council and take them out in the field with you and before you know it you'll be getting much joy in being able to identify some of these wonderful and intricate features of the flowers around the Yorkshire Dales. One of the intense delights of spring is coming across a field full of lilac flowers like this here. Absolutely amazing. And it wasn't that many years ago when I would run past such splendors like this and not even notice them. And one of the main reasons that I didn't really bother to notice was that I didn't know what they were and I had no idea how to find out. So this video, we're going to take an unknown flower and talk through some of the things and features within that flower that you want to be able to identify in order to figure out what type of flower it is. And you don't need to remember all these things. Even still to this day, I bring a little notebook out with me and I have apps on my phone and wildflower keys to help me identify new flowers that I don't know anything about. So let's take this little flower over here and have a look. So I'm going to be, as I will be looking at my notes in my notebook, and I will be jotting down the petals. Are there petals on this flower? And in this case, there is very much so. And then I'm looking at how many petals there are. So in this case, we have four petals and what color they are. And these petals could be in lots of different forms so it could be a really complex set of petals like if it was the case of a orchid or it could be the case of the celandines that we can see over here it could be like your bird's foot trefoil which don't really look like traditional petals but that's more like a pea style so it's more enclosed or it could be a bell, like say a blue bell or a hair bell or your foxglove. So these are all little things that you want to jot down in your notebook for identification later on. So we've identified that it has petals. How many petals? So this is for the colour of them and the form. So the next thing you're interested in, which will tell you a little bit more about identifying this flower, is the grouping of those flowers. So in the case of a primrose, you will have a single, single flower head on each stem. But this is a bit different. This doesn't look like that. You've got one stem coming up here, but you've got multiple flowers coming off. Now, this is interesting because this is what's referred to as a cluster. Now, in flowers that are members of the carrot family, for example, these form like an umbel. And instead of the flowers being offset from each other, they form a fan on the top. And so that would be really distinctive of pignut or hogweed 
or um, any of those members of your Karis family. And then the other types that you can get is that you can get a spike. So you literally could have a flower and you've got flowers all the way up the stem in a long spike, which is really interesting. And you get spikes typically on orchids. So the next thing that you want to jot down is the flower size. So is this a really, really small flower? So is it like your speedwells or your barren strawberries that are tiny little flowers? Um, are they a really big flower, like say your marsh marigolds? Um, and then what I would say this is, I would write this down as a medium sized flower. So something in between your really big flowers and your teeny little ones that you really need to get down on your knees and have a look at. And then jot down the time of year it is because these flowers won't flower or blossom the whole year round. So that will be indicative of what type of flower it is. And then the next thing to look at is the leaves. So has it got any leaves? Does it have different types of leaves? So sometimes it can have different leaves at the bottom of the plant. Okay, so you might want to have a little bit of a root around to see if that's the case. Now on this particular uh, flower here, you can see that these are leaflets. So you've got like, this would be your leaf structure here, but then these are subdivided into leaflets. So you can see them on either side. And the other thing that's interesting to know is the shape of those leaves. So are they heart shaped? Are they oblong? Are they like thin and wispy like these here? And then you want to be looking at things like, are the leaflets and leaves, are they alternate up the stem? So that's the case here. There's one on this side, one on that side, one on that, and then the other. So these alternate up the stem or are they both equal and opposite? So you have maybe a pair of leaves that are both coming out of the stock together like this because that again is another interesting um, and uh, noteworthy thing to write down. And then I'm thinking about, well, what's the, what's the height of the plant? What's the habitat? So this flower here is obviously in grassland. And you want to be thinking about, well, is this, um, is this disturbed ground? Is it woodland? Is it in an old quarry? Um, is the ground really, really damp? So um, you, would, you would very easily um, be aware of like the marsh marigolds. They love to be in damp, marshy ground. Clue is in the name. Um, and then anything else in particular. So you want to be thinking about, is there an unusual feature that you can actually see? Are the stamen present? Have you got um, petals, but also have you got sepals? So you can see here that we do have sepals, okay? And a lovely example of looking at the sepals um, can do for you is to um, look at different types of buttercups. This is the bulbous buttercup. And how do I know? Well, if you look underneath, you can see that the sepals are actually turned back on itself. So this is the bulbous buttercup. And that's a really distinctive thing. So you look and sound really cool when you walk along and you're like, oh yeah, that's the bulbous buttercup. How do you know? Well, look at the sepals, they're pointing back on themselves. And so that can be another thing, another defining feature that gives you a clue. So with all this information that we've gathered here, I can say with quite a bit of certainty that these are cuckoo flowers.